Got my war paint on. Land ho! Goodbye, Caribbean. Coils up to 60 knot gust. I'm gonna change of plans. Today is day eight of our journey, and we're stuck in the ragged island. Stuck. That's one word to put it. <laughs> Ryan's making me pancakes for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's <laughs> Day! Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. It's not too bad here. I guess we're stuck here till Wednesday, and it's Sunday right now. Woo! I'll go slower. Do, 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 do. This is where we are stuck. So we're gonna learn some games tonight. Fake news. Our friend Gemma and Axel. Yam slam. Yeehaw! <laughs> we'll let you know if we like them or not. Three, Three four, five, six. Four, five, six. You got a small straight. <laughs> My first silver hard! I'm holding ass! My pants are coming off! <laughs> <laughs> My tits are off. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> my it pants fall off. Right now, my pants are off. <laughs> now, how do we get back on? You pull up. I'll, I'll get the ladder down. Never done this before. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo. laughs> Hold on, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> This is what we do during safe harbor. <laughs> the mask would be cool. Open your eyes on the water. The lovely couple doing our first toe behind in a whopping 12 feet of water. Oh wow, we're going really slow. We're going 2.4 knots. <laughs> Say hey. Let's go. Let's go. We're happy. Nice little detour from our passage. Exciting adventure. <laughs> yeah, little surprise. We might get off the boat. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a buddy boat. out of the ragged islands today we're waiting on our buddy boat to get ready looks like dark skies over there um, the weather is Ryan can talk to you about the weather <laughs> we have the generator on to power up before we go and go. we're ready to go we're ready to get back get this journey over with as we get between kind of Florida and Cuba and the banks here, there's a lot of land. They create land effect and all that heat rising during the day creates the potential for storms, squalls, stuff like that. Kind of like one, a little one that's going behind us here. So I, I just think the rest of the journey is going to be a little bit more dynamic because we're going to have to pay attention to these things popping up and moving around and stuff like that. But 
there's not going to be a perfect weather window, so we need to go. So that's kind of the synopsis for the weather. Downwind sailing with squalls for two days and then um, motoring the last day. And hopefully we get to the Gulf Stream right as a lull hits between these systems and it'll give us a, a, a calmish crossing against the Gulf Stream. I don't want to go back to the jungle of America with everything going on, but we're just kind of, there's not much we can do here. We're kind of running out of food. Yeah, it's just like a, a chore that we're ready to complete another check. We did this, so let's we're, boogie. I've, I've come to appreciate that we're a boat that likes to do things. When, yeah. Like, so we spent two months in USVI, much like many other boats. And in those two months, we circumnavigated both islands a couple times and went to all the little islands we could. A lot of boats just sat still for two months. So like, we just want, we want to go and do it and get it done. Um, some people are hesitant. We're explorers. This, this is us. We want to go. We want to get Let's it done. Let's go. What do you think, Kira? Do you even know what's happening? I feel raindrops. You have to put one on your face too. What? Okay. They're going stir crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna put tattoos on her face. Yeah, I'm gonna put mine right here, maybe. Like a. Uh, yeah. What do you think? It, uh, this is similar to just a native, like Maori design. Just do your whole yeah. jaw. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm in. Yeah, we can do whatever <laughs> we want. I'm actually kind of keen on that. <laughs> <laughs> Putting our war paint on. Here, action. Usually when we go out on a passage, we say, let's get ready for war. And so this time we're putting on our war tattoos. Our war paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready for our sail. No. Got my war paint on. You got copyright music. We're ready to go sailing. To war. <laughs> Amazonian um, Viking. Viking women. Yes. Tattooed up. I think we're bored waiting. <laughs> All right, we're headed out. We're sailing out, and we said goodbye to everyone in the Anchorage, and it's raining. Kelsey's getting all wet over there. Oh yeah. Her ta her face tattoos fell off. Yeah, my war paint is uh, taken over by the war. Not too bad. We got a uh, yeah between 16 and 20 knots of wind. We were reefed somewhat conservatively, but we're still going bet seven knots. So. Yeah, I just don't want to, I don't want to be oversailed if we get big gusts from these little storms. Woohoo! Stormy weather sailing! <laughs> Whoa! Going uh, two knots and we have 28 apparent. I, I checked the radar before we left. This storm is meaner than the last storm. The last storm we were getting gusts close to 30. The true wind today, the, the gradient wind is supposed to be like 18, 19. We were going eight knots, we got up to 10 knots, and that's just way too fast because we need to time our Gulf Stream arrival on the weekend. At, at eight, seven knots, we'd be getting there a day early while there's still weather in the Gulf Stream. So, uh, if Tula's on the summer is nearby, we might go to their anchorage. I'm not paying attention. It's a rough one right now. Wait, let me show you the front of the boat. back. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is taking a lot longer. He had originally told me like, you know, maybe you should leave late Thursday or possibly Friday and now he sent me a bill and he said, you know, there's really a lot of volatility. Friday might be even too early, so I want to keep that in our, take that into our, we look at things. So we anchored again. The storms were just too much and Chris Parker recommended us to leave Friday. And today is Thursday, so tomorrow we will leave, hopefully, and try to get to Florida. We might change our plans uh, from Key Largo to like West Palm Beach, just to, because the weather is just not cooperating. And so Ryan's cleaning the boat. He's taking advantage of the clear water before we get to the ICW in the United States. And I am meal prepping some rice aroni and noodles for the passage, and maybe some brown. Day 12 of the quarantine, and we baked a lot of muffins and brownies and muffins and brownies. So we just pulled up the hook, and we're about to leave the Ragged Islands, and then right away, this thing broke. 
fell off the mainsail. So we're anchoring again. And the boom is way over there. Damn. Good thing that happened here at the anchorage instead of out there. So I found one of the bolts, I guess the other one, there's two bolts on the inside of that boom. One of them was just sitting there. There's lock washers that apparently weren't doing anything. Um, so it just, I guess over time, one bolt and then the other came off. It's actually pretty lucky this happened right here because I can do this repair without too much waves and stuff like that. If we were out there, it'd be a lot more of a hassle. So I'm gonna fix it properly. The backup plan would have been to wrap some line around and just attach the uh, things anyways. It honestly probably would work, but it's nice to just do it properly. Glad my hand fits inside the boom. <laughs> Should be hard otherwise. Okay, Ryan fixed it. So, we're gonna try this again. <laughs> the Raggins do not want us to leave. We've tried multiple times and things keep happening so we'll see if how this goes good job ryan we're leaving again trying again um probably get the jib out and start sailing i think this is completely saleable at the moment so here's the lake good job engines are up and we're sailing already good sailing weather right now we're going 7-2, sailing, fairly reefed down, 15 knots of wind. I just extra reef just because if a squall pops up, which today there might be, I don't want to have to hurry reef. Tying a little lashing here to keep our water jugs from um, getting out every time there's a big wave to the beam. What you think, Arya? When is this sail going to be over with? And Kelsey yeah. and I uh, are going to play shithead <laughs> until... 154th game. <laughs> Before the weather gets bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a storm coming! It might actually pass us, we might be fine, but it wasn't doing anything, so we put it away. <laughs> it's our buddy boat way over there. So it's about 10 something p.m. We've dodged pretty much all the storms. Uh, the last one we got some sprinkles on, but it was a close thing. Uh, the radar has been in and out. It's not been steady. Um, I messed with the wires, unplugged it, replugged it, turned it on and off a dozen times, and finally got it kind of working steady, just to see that the storm was like three miles away. But it missed us by two miles. But uh, this one's been making quite a light show. But it's weird, you can see the, the uh, lightning, obviously, but then there's the uh, stars just behind it and then there's like also bioluminescence in the water only the lightning shows on camera it's like it's cool um, we have another storm in front of us but I'm hoping that these storms are coming off of Cuba so the way that this uh, low pressure tropical storm thing north of us is sucking the storms that build up over Cuba during the day off of Cuba into our path and we've just been dumb luck missing them um, so hopefully we continue our dumb luck and um, miss the next few and then I hope it'll be starry skies for the rest of the night all through the day and then maybe another round of this tomorrow but we're getting really really lucky and it's quite a show it took last a time night to... was electrifying and this is what Kelsey did on her watch I was bored she's a little rapper I whip my hair back and forth <laughs> <laughs> and look at Kira made a big mess it's day 14 14. Two weeks since we left the USBI. Woo! And we thought it was gonna take eight days. Okay. What you doing? Home. Let's hurry now. Let's say Kira. Okay. What are you doing? What number book is that? Number three. Number three. We're in the crowd at Before that, I read a book called Honolulu about a Korean girl, and then before that, I read The Nightingale, which is a really good book, and Kelsey just finished. And we both cried. Yes. <laughs> and it's super hot and disgusting out, and buggy. No and Kira got a bath, but all of us smell like sweat and bug bugs. And the bugs are flying from Cuba. 
Yeah, I guess maybe the bugs are flying from Cuba. Not sure. If the internet had a boat, where would they park it? In Google Docs. <sighs> yep, that's all I got. I'm hoping it's just hitting the islands and it's not a particularly strikey There's storm. There's some gnarly strikes though. Ugh, ugh. We've met so many people who've been struck by lightning. Lightning up the entire sea is crazy. The wind is only nine knots apparent and it's ahead of us. So really there's only like four knots of real wind right now because we're on the backside of the storm. But I think I recall that the backside of the storms are where the, there's more lightning activity. And most of it's cloud lightning, but we are seeing every few minutes some strikes which doesn't make you feel very good there was one where ryan and i were having a conversation and there was Blinded. a strike and we both just went we like we just like lost vision for a second <laughs> so it's my last overnight watch i don't know how to feel about that i've been on this boat for seven months and it is i've never ever experienced something like this before living out in the middle of the water um, getting to explore amazing places it's pretty emotional you know when you think about uh, this, opp this opportunity that I had and I couldn't have done it without Jessica and Ryan I mean you guys you have taught me how to be a sailor I'm a freaking sailor what that is so weird I can't put into words how thankful I am that y'all invited me onto this boat um, to come share your life with you, just a piece of your life, and to experience the Caribbean uh, from a different perspective. In a couple days, I'll be out of here, which is weird to think about. You know, in a couple days, I'll be driving, driving back up to visit my parents in Virginia. Um, Probably going to stay there for a little while and then try and make my way out to Colorado for the winter. Um, that's the tentative plan. Go out to Colorado and live the mountain life and get my skydive license and potentially just snowboard for a couple months. Being out here on the water is something different. It's something a lot of people don't, don't get the opportunity to do and it's something that is just truly beautiful. I don't even know how to tell people about this. It's, it's a different language, um, and it's, it's a world that you can only be some, that you can only understand when you're submerged in it. And I understand why you guys like it so much. I love you guys. I love that little stinking baby. If you don't know where she is, one day I kidnapped her. <laughs> I'm gonna miss her and your dog and. You both just have just made me a better person. Honestly, this whole trip has just not you know evolved my traveling and my exploration, but it evolved my mind uh, a lot. And I face a lot of challenges during all of this that I overcome with the help of you guys. You guys are really special to me. Day 15, we are almost to Florida. I think we're in the Gulf Stream right now. Yeah. Ryan sees an orange thing. Yeah, there's an orange thing up here. It's the color of life jackets, but it's way too big to be a life jacket. So, some sort of emergency equipment that fell overboard? We'll see. What is this orange thing in the middle of the ocean? What is that? A life ring from a huge ship, probably. Break the monotony. Is this your hat? Oh my gosh, cute. <laughs> Kelsey's is gonna jump in 1600 feet of water and look down. And then, good thing I'll be in water because I'll probably piss my pants. It's just gonna be endless blue. Oh my gosh. I'm nervous. 
Oh my god. Woohoo! Can't see shit. It's just blue for days. <laughs> I'm actually terrified right now. Yeah, he's like, you're you right. You're right yeah. next to the boat. Did it! I, I kinda had to like but like literally just tell myself like calm to, to calm the heck down. My breathing was going nuts. And then I felt like okay. Like I could stay in, you know? Yeah. There's one little fish, one little guy. Day 15. Well I'm excited because we're almost to Florida. We have cell phone service, so that means land is close. <laughs> we can't see it yet though. We no. see a bunch of fishing boats everywhere. We haven't seen this many boats and who knows I waved long. to someone earlier. That was the, <laughs> that was the highlight of my day. <laughs> yeah, we're almost there, folks. My new hat that I found in the ocean. Who knows what it's like in the states? We have no idea what we're coming to. Yeah, we're coming back to scary times, but nothing scarier than that storm the other night with thirty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning <laughs> all around us. <laughs> Literally a mile within us. I was just worried about the boat like getting hit, but everything I was pretty fine. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Land ho! Way out there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Like we that. almost made it. We have to wait for high tide to go into the channel uh, to visit our friends. Doc. So while we're waiting for high tide, that's 6, 6 p.m. tonight, we were looking at what we could do near here in the Christ of the Abyss statue, which is like a super famous spot, was literally like less than a mile away from the entrance where we're going in. So we pulled over and we're gonna wait it out here and Christ of the Abyss statue is right there and there's a reef there. So we're gonna take a look. Pointing at me. And land is over there. So close. Last snorkel of the season and then we go north. I found a GoPro drone dead in the water. I, I mean, we can't use it. It's not like, hooray, we found it. But uh, clean up, it's just, this is what I'm afraid of is losing a drone in the water. And it's, you know, good to clean up the reef. So now round two, Jessica and me. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get stuck. Oh, you're gonna get stuck in those poles. it's only three feet deep but they tell us it should work we right now we have three feet under the keel about uh, six feet total joke about the mosquitoes it's malarious it's <laughs> a good one I have new new people listening I, I get almost his body language was the epitome of groan he was like, <laughs> he was like god damn it I'm not ready <laughs> we've made it to land and Key Largo and I can't wait to sleep 
Um, we still have kind of a bit of a journey to get to Charleston, but this is the end of our passage. Salty Dog Flotilla passage from USBIs to here. And there's a little bit more than a thousand miles, maybe even 1100 with our Ragged Islands detour, but it's a pretty big haul. Took us how long? How many days to take us? Fifteen. Seven was the longest time at sea, and then... Four days and... Four days in ragged and three days. Six days in ragged and three I can't days. We're there that long. Six days in ragged. Two and two hours and ten minutes for this one. <laughs> but who was counting? Not me. <laughs> we made it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> we'll miss her. I miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're getting out of here. She'll Ow. be back. We'll work out. They always come back. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well that's it for this video! Bye. So next videos will be we're working our way north and then this summer we're doing a whole bunch of refit stuff. So if you like refit stuff, we'll have that in spades. Yep, lots of boat work to do. Bye guys! Thanks for Woo. watching!